The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints of the soul. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, how many lessons are there for us to learn in each and every day that our Lord renews each and every day with His divine grace and divine energy and divine help. Words fail us to make known the glory of God if we don't have the thinking of Christ. Much in this church has been given for us. Much could be communicated to the people who are being believers in Christ. And to the unbelievers as long as we are being kept as a witnesses, as an ambassador for God on this earth. We could make them to snatch out from the eternal hell as many as we can through the holy manner of walk and through the ambassador laid down shape upon every believer the responsibility. This ambassadorship which has been laid down for the responsibility upon every believer is of a great, great work. After the church rapture and then taking into consideration the most important event, the tribulation for seven years and then the millennium. After the end of the millennium, those who do not believe, along with Satan, these unbelievers will be casted into the lake of fire forever and forever. Pharaoh hardened his heart not to know the law, though Lord gave much gracious ample chances for him to know. So are today's men in the Christendom today, who are not going to take the real grace of the Lord and to show forth to these unbelievers who will be perishing forever and forever into the eternal lake of fire. Though for them, through the entire world, through the media, evangelism has been told to Christ, which has to be a proper revolution of the gospel to them, and which is not so sound, which has to be by faith alone in Christ alone, graciously, which our Lord gratuitously gave himself as an offering for us, causing to be reconciliated, making us to be in the propitiatory shelter. All these things which the word of the Lord explains for us so dogmatically, when it has not been presented, represented very faithfully to those hearers, when it has not been made known to these men, definitely they will be having a doubt about their salvation. Definitely they will be thinking, my gods are better because I can go and serve them rather than serving this Christ. Because our Lord says just to come and believe and you will be saved. But they say, how you can believe by just not doing any works? So Christianity is also following the trends of doing works to be saved. And thus the salvation gospel, which has to be so pure and true, has been mingled with heresy, cults, works. Not only there it ends. They have not kept the doctrine straight towards the gospel. How can they make the doctrine straight in the church, which has to be number one priority in our pulpits, the mystery doctrine of the church age? They are not able to understand how true it has to be. They are not able to concern how pure we have to be. They are not able to understand what are we losing if you are not able to give number one priority for doctrine in their churches. How corrupt they are thinking about salvation, about the gospel. Much more corrupt and worst they are concerning the doctrine. Therefore, Apostle Paul, while writing to the Philippians, he tells, 
together with the Episcopus and Dikayasunis the one who have the duties to tell and the deacons who are there to help them in establishing this world. And this is only to a male believer. And to a female believer, it is not. It is not given the office to serve, to have authority. But they have been given only to service, like playing arms, which we can note in Apostle chapter 6. But many of the people do not even know the differentiation that a woman should never and never can she have authority to stand in the pulpit and to preach. But today, the things have been totally changed. Do you know why this church is so much specifically true and genuine to God? Or it has to be so much holy to God? Why our Lord says, before the foundation of the world, I have chosen and kept for you to this mystery doctrine of the church age to be holy and blameless. Do you have known ever anything about it? You will never understand what it is. In Daniel chapter 9 verse 24, we have the reason what it is. The everlasting righteousness will be given when all these things will come to an end. That everlasting righteousness will be, after the human history will be, absolutely taken out. The last trial of the human history, after the millennium. But right now our Lord wants in this church age, a replica or a model of that righteousness through us. Because he has imputed that righteousness for us by faith alone in Christ alone. And we are no longer here to hold that righteousness by our works, by our deeds, by X, Y, Z reasons. Therefore, this church is unique. Therefore, this church age is very great. And this righteousness which our Lord imputes to each and every believer is of Him. And it is not by our own works that we should boast. It is for according to His own purpose He has designed for us in eternity past. But many of the pastors do not even have a thought to consider. If the everlasting righteousness which would come after millennium, the new heaven and the new earth, right now what that righteousness our Lord demands through the mentor ministry indwelling in us, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that righteousness begins with the number one priority for salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. And that righteousness works through us as we grow upon as told in Ephesians 4.24, you have been made in chaste aletheia and in true righteousness of our Lord. The righteousness which could be inherited by the word of the Lord that you take. But many people do not know what it is. That righteousness which we have to show forth. And several times the fruit of the Spirit in Ephesians 5.9 it says, it's in righteousness, goodness and in truth. And dear brethren, why these people are not able to understand? The main reason is the pastor teacher has failed to communicate properly, totally, completely. The pastor teacher has flunkered the test because they don't have the bona fide gift of teaching, so they come to the pulpit. They don't have real understanding of the word of the Lord, then too they come to the pulpits. And dear brethren, Apostle Paul himself claims that I am a preacher, teacher and apostle. Now an apostleship has been removed, but we do have preaching and teaching, which is a work of a pastor teacher. And he says, I am an ambassador in Ephesians 6.20 for this world message. How many believers are really having this burden to be an ambassador for Lord? How many pastor teachers are really having the burden to be an ambassador at the same time, a burden to be a pastor teacher in rightly dividing the word of truth? It is of a very great pain that you are learning these things and we are really neglecting the one primary thing which has to be number one priority for the word of the law. As long as you may go in this earth, so long if you are ignoring Bible doctrine, 
if you are ignoring that our Lord wants a replica of a copy of his righteousness on this earth wherewith our Lord wants to represent to this people because in the later half after the millennium everlasting righteousness will come but right now he wants a copy of that righteousness for us therefore Ephesians 4.24 declares to us that we have been made and put on the new man which has been created after the image of him which is in great righteousness and taste aletheia of the truth which we have to grow up the true holiness Hasiosus this aletheia the truth which can give you that righteousness the first righteousness is by salvation by faith alone in Christ alone which has been imputed for you that is of God not of your own and second righteousness you have to grow up in the holiness through the truth then only that righteousness will be manifested in us if not we are not able to look not able to consider not able to think how it could be where it could be when it could be dear brethren today's pastor teachers are really teaching rebellion against the true essence of Bible doctrine what the epistles say about the church, what we have to be, what is every believer, what is Alec Enicetesis, what is quality of privileges for us, what is the purpose that our Lord has chosen and kept in this earth. This has become really a great pain for many of the people not able to understand. And they have really been forsaking the truth. And do you know how much are we growing and squelching like God, the Holy Spirit, without growing to the intention where our Lord has intended for us to be? We are growing wickedly, but we are not going, growing up righteously in the holiness of God. Because we don't take number one priority for Bible doctrine, that's why. And many of the people are not able to understand what it is, where it is, why it is. The source is the church. We are being baptized into one spirit and we are being told not to forsake the assembly of God so that the pastor teacher should train you up. And if there are not enough people who are really interested for number one priority for Bible doctrine, our Lord said that two or three, in them I am in the midst of them to teach. The Lord requires quality, not quantity. That two or three are gathered with the true hope in the Bible doctrine, our Lord could train us up for His glory. But dear brethren, Many people are not able to understand that sample of righteousness which will come again in the everlasting righteousness after the millennium is being manifested now through us, through the church. Every believer has been given this true righteousness. Every believer has been given this true holiness. And that righteousness and holiness could be maintained by the true completed canon of scripture. And you may say you don't have it, so you are a fool because you have the indwelling ministry of blood, God, the Holy Spirit, and He's going to train you up if you are desiring for the truth. And what does He do? He will send you the right pastor teachers to in return to train you up. And that is the real work of blood, God, the Holy Spirit, dear blood, blood. To cause you to train up to the image where it's our Lord has called. To cause you to think to the praise of His glory and His grace. And we are not here for any simple, stupid, XYZ reasons. Playing poker with morality, legalism, circumcision, and thinking that I will be saved. No. Graciously, the propitiatory shelter of expiation given to us for the redemption through reconciliation is through His righteousness by faith alone in Christ alone in His grace. And if you are not able to understand these things, Lord help you. Why many of the people are not able to look, nor consider, nor think? Because they have really lost that which has to be true in the church. Dear brethren, think over these issues. Time is too short. Responsible to lay down upon our shoulders is too large. Much is given for us to duplicate and show for the millennium, show after the millennium as well. But less, are, but less we are representing. So which way you want to go, you decide. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those. Why here, without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life, in order to link to Lord God the Father, that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple believing Christ, you shall be saved. 
Whereas for the believer, the great merit is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. You shall learn to acquire to others to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the great merit is to Kerusotan Bagan, herald the word in season and out of season. Because of the diamond from my witnesses, where which you have been called. Number one, diamond from my witnesses in the Trinity, followed the Bible in our hands. And number two, diamond from my witnesses for our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, do not worry, besides nature, my entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth and to show forth one sample copy of that everlasting righteousness which will be revealed when the human history ends. But we have something more in this church age to show forth as Allah like naked cases. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through the word, particularly for the revelation of an everlasting righteousness which will be. So Father, Help us to really stand forth in thy true holiness and in true righteousness only when we walk in thy truth in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by confessing of our sins. To be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, first we need to be a believer. A spiritually dead person, an unbeliever, can never be to this, nor he can understand the spiritual phenomena. But rather, Lord, you have given for us the Spirit to understand. We thank thee for this privilege, O Lord, and help us to utilize this to the maximum glorification for Christ in maximum efficiency as we are going through maximum in this church age. For we ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord.